everybody. I'm Darren Jackson, and uh, I'm along with Tim Raines. And thank you for joining us for the Budweiser Happy Hour. As Tim, the Rock Raines, the Hall of Famer, and I are going to sit around and talk a little White Sox baseball, uh, past, future, present, and uh, have a little baseball fun with you guys right now. So I'd like to talk about Tim Raines, uh, somebody that was a teammate of mine in 1994 when I joined the White Sox. And uh, Tim, somebody that I'd always looked up to as, as a former competitor going against him when I was with other teams and then watching him as one of the premier leadoff players in all of baseball. Um, to me, there was two premier players in Major League Baseball leading off for a team. It was, it was Ricky Henderson and it was Tim Raines at that time. And that's why both of them are in the Hall of Fame. So Tim's got a lot of insight and great information and wisdom. He'll be able to share with us what's going on with the White Sox right now. So Tim, tell me about what's going on with you right now before we get into all the deep stuff with the White Sox. Um, I'd say I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I've got an opportunity to hang out with the fam. Uh, we've been pretty close the past six to seven months. Uh, but it's been good. You know, my daughter's going to be turning 10 in, in about nine days. So uh, kind of looking forward to that. Well, I'm glad you get the family time, unfortunately, in these difficult circumstances and times for our nation. But it's always a pleasure hanging out with you. I always enjoy our time together. Now, we got some players in this outfield right now, in particular, two stud superstars by the name of Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert that have been playing phenomenal baseball, man. And you're up to speed on how they've been doing. You know, they've, they've been crushing the baseball. Uh, they're fun to watch. They're energetic. I mean, there's a lot of life on the White Sox team. But tell me what you see, what you see, what you're watching with these highlights of these players. What do you think their futures are? What do you think uh, long term, how strong they'll be as players? Uh, I think sky's the limit for those guys. I mean, they're young. They're big. They're strong. They're fast. I mean. Um, I don't remember uh, it, you know, I have to look back a long, long time ago since we've had two young players of their caliber uh, coming to a team at the same time uh, to, uh, to play, you know, left field, right, center field, and, and have all the, uh, the tools that they have at such a young age. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable to see and how fast they've adjusted to the major league level, uh, especially Roberts. I mean, Roberts stepped on the scene and just have taken off. I mean, there's no telling how good that kid is going to be. And uh, Jimenez, you know, of course, you know, came in last year and started to get his feet wet. And he's starting to feel pretty solid out there in left field. And uh, like I said, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know of any team or you know how long it's been since you know two young, talented players stepped on the field at the same time at such a young age. You know, one of the things I thought about immediately is when you first broke with big leagues and you had a teammate by the name of Andre Dawson that was a five-tool player. Um, and, and one of the comparisons for me right now is you look at Luis Robert, he's actually bigger than Andre, uh, stature-wise, maybe not stronger, maybe not faster, might not have the same arm, but very- Not yet, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very comparable, those two, um, because Andre all around was one of the best baseballs, I mean, one of the best players in baseball. And you can see that I'm sure that Luis Robert's got that potential. He does. He does. And, you know, uh, as far as, you know, power at, at, at a young age, and I think, you know, Andre kind of grew into his power. Uh, I think Roberts already had that power. Uh, you know, I think there's still a little fine tuning. I mean, this is his first, you know, full season. He's trying to make that adjustment from, you know, triple a to the big leagues and uh so far so good you know it's, it's coming along and like i said earlier man there's no telling how, how good that kid is going to be you know you came up with uh with a team and i started thinking about the african-americans that were on the team with you warren cromarty ellis valentine andre dawson i don't know who else could have been on your team um but the white Sox got a bunch of guys now they're more or less Afro-Caribbean guys out of Cuba, out of the Dominican, and these Latin players that all represent 
of the White Sox. But I look at them and I still just see guys that are young, talented, guys that, you know, of color, that really bring a lot of excitement to the game. Do you see any comparisons to, to like when you were playing with Montreal when you first got there? Was there any stigma with uh, so many African-Americans being on your team? Because it seems like in our culture today, the White Sox having this many Latin players, it's not even an issue. Well, it really wasn't an issue with us. And I think, I'm not sure if it was because we were playing in Montreal. Uh, you know, that, that could have been the difference. I mean, I think when we went on the road, it was, it was a little different because we we're on the road. But at home, I mean, uh, they, they made us feel, at, you know, at home. And for me, uh, when I first came up, I kind of thought it was a norm because I stepped into a situation where, there was a lot of African American players on the team, so uh, obviously going through the minor leagues, you don't see it that way. And uh, as a young uh, black player going up there, um, you kind of expect it to be the way it is in the minor leagues. But then all of a sudden, you go to the big leagues, and and you know there was. I I remember one game, we had eight African Americans on the field. In, in, a, in a single game. The only non-African American was Gary Carter, which was our catcher. So um, either as a young black player, you, you see, you're so proud of, 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 of those moments, you know, because I don't, I don't think, as far as I was concerned, I didn't see that ever, you know, going up. But then all of a sudden I was there, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool, you know. Uh, I've never seen this before, uh, but uh, I like it, you know. And, and and like I said earlier, being in Montreal, it wasn't an issue. I mean, we walked around, you know, the town of Montreal, and people were treating us like like uh, superstars, and before they even know who we were. So, I think going through that, you know, at an early age. You know, being accepted uh, kind of gave you that sense of, you know, I can come here and, and, and do my job and feel like uh, I'm really in the big leagues and there was no outside noise of, of, of being an African American playing at the major league level at home. You know, there were times on the road when you, you know, but that's on the road. You're going to always get that negative. Uh, kind of vibe because you are the opposing teams. But uh, I think those first 11 years of my career kind of um, helped uh, as far as, you know, getting the opportunity to play in the major league and feeling at home, um, you know, up there in Montreal. You know, it's funny as I'm looking at the way these guys are getting to the league now and these kids, Eli Jimenez broke onto the scene last year in a big way. Big stage, New York City against the Yankees, hit his first big league home runs, handled the pressure, no problem. But think about the guys this year that are getting to the big leagues for the first time. All these rookies that are playing in empty stadiums. There's got to be that they get out there and they don't feel that same pressure that a kid would that's in front of the big crowd. The game on the line, having to make the pitch, having to make the, the swing that they need to drive in the big run. So do you think all of a sudden some of these great young players we're seeing next year, if we got fans back in the seats, that there's going to be a different vibe for these guys, that the pressure all of a sudden might make them play a little differently? I think so. I mean, I really do. I mean, I think, you know, you kind of kind of have that minor league vibe, but at the major league level, you know, obviously, you know, there are some, you know, minor league cities that, you know, have, decent crowds, but never crowds like major league crowds. Um, and also the media is going to be a little different. You know, you're going to have uh, microphones in your, in your face all the time. Everything you do, everyone gets an opportunity to see it. You know, when you're in the minor leagues, the only time you see minor league players when they make great plays <laughs> or, you know, they're or, or ESPN player of the day. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, at the major league level, it's totally different. I mean, you don't really have to make great plays for someone to see what the heck you're doing out on the field. You make mistakes, they see that. 
uh, at the major league level. On the, on the minor league level, you don't really see those mistakes. So um, it's definitely a, a big difference as far as the media attention. Um, you know, if if you're going well, everybody knows it. If you're going bad, everybody knows it. So uh, uh, it, it's definitely uh, the psychic of, of, of playing in, in, in the difference as the minor leagues and the major leagues is totally different. So uh, you have to be prepared uh, mentally and physically to uh, be able to make that jump. And, you know, everybody doesn't kind of make it at, you know, when you first start, but eventually, like myself, when I first got up there, I was scared to death at first. Yeah. yeah. But then I, I, I realized that, you know, um, the minor leagues and the major leagues are totally different. So when you make that step from the minor leagues to the major leagues, you, you got to really be prepared. And, uh, you know, for me, the second time around, it, it, it gave me the opportunity to go back to the minor leagues, work a little harder, get a little a more mentally tough, tougher to, uh, to, to make that next step. So I was thinking about this today, base, today's baseball players are just honestly much bigger, much stronger, better conditioned for, for overall athletics than, than players from your era, my era, before your era. Um, it started changing during my era where, where I had to get a personal trainer for some health issues. And then more and more guys were going down that path. We had Steve Hodges there that was working us out hard with the White Sox. So we're getting these trainers that were really focused on strength and conditioning and speed. But what the heck's going on with all the injuries when everybody's bigger and stronger? What is it that all of a sudden you're looking at, this guy's hurt, that guy's hurt? What do you see the difference is now in comparison to when you got there? And I, I want to I see what you have to say about this because I got an opinion. Well, the way I see it, first of all, we didn't have all that. We didn't have the Steve Rogers. We didn't have the, uh, the equipment. Uh, we didn't have the weights like these guys have. Um, I think, you know, nowadays we're, we're, we're concentrating a lot on our physical appearance, uh, you know, a lot more than we did in the past. Um, I think when I first got to the major leagues, you know, I never touched the weight. You know, the only thing I did was, you know, stretch a lot, um, and I, I ran hard a lot. I mean, I ran a lot of sprints. Uh, I didn't, I didn't do a lot of you know long distancing, but uh, we stayed in shape back in those days in a different way. You know, when we had time off, we took time off, and we got away from the game. You know, the difference I think today is is conditioning year round for most of these players you know when the season is over you know they're sending them packages telling what they do on monday tuesday wednesday thursday <laughs> friday saturday uh and you pretty much have to do that especially in the minor leagues now the minor leagues is, is, is definitely tougher i mean you know you you you'll have a monday wednesday friday workout at home and on the road. I mean, these guys have to go work out before they even go to the ballpark. Uh, and I think, um, you know, they're eating properly. I know I never ate properly and I still don't <laughs> eat properly. So, so all those things, you know, uh, most clubs are, are paying attention to, to all of these facets of the game. And, you know, it's, it's become a situation where I think some guys are stronger than, than, than they should be. Uh, I think sometimes the strength uh, just doesn't compare with, with, with the muscle. Mm -hmm. So when you, you're so strong and maybe you're kind of stronger than, than, than you're, you know, at, at that time in your, your life that, uh, you know, your body just hadn't caught up to, you know, what you're doing as far as playing baseball. Maybe playing football, it's a little different. But baseball, I think, you know, if you don't stretch all the time, 
stretching out those muscles, putting those muscles in situations where you prepare to say, if I'm at the plate and I top one off the off the off a home plate, and I've got to like go as hard as you know right away, and that body is not ready for it. That's when you start coming down with you know strained muscles and you know and, and and some of these times as far as the pitches are concerned, these guys are throwing so hard their arm is just not prepared. Right. To be throwing a hundred miles an hour all the time, so uh, it's it's interesting to see how you know it's going, you know this is going to turn out with uh, so many injuries. I think uh, you know as a, as an older player, I look at that. I'm going, wow, you know these guys are doing so much more physically uh, to get stronger and bigger. But uh, back in our day, we didn't do all that stuff, and nobody got hurt as much. <laughs> so uh, it's, 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 you know, I, I look at it, and I, and I wonder, you know, what it is. And uh, I haven't, haven't put my finger on it yet. You know, uh, one of the things I know, and I'm just going to say this real fast and, and, and ask you another question is, I do notice that we were also trained as players to play through pain. I mean, any little lingering thing, we had to deal with it. They'd look at you and say, be quiet and get back out on the field. We don't want to hear it, or you would lose your spot. So that's a little different nowadays. Nowadays, they make sure to protect the players more so and don't tell you to go play through something that's playable. So um, I, I do see that. But, you know, one of the things I want to ask you about, too, is this, Rock. Um, this team this year for the White Sox, really exciting. And maybe, maybe they're ahead of the curve. They weren't necessarily prepared – to really be the first place team already through halfway through this short season, but they have what it takes because they got the offensive talent. But uh, it, this is a team, man. It takes me back to '94 when I came to the White Sox. Strike year, we were a first place team at the time, potentially a World Series championship team. I'm kind of seeing the same kind of excitement and energy with this team this year. This team's kind of got all of it. Maybe maybe a little healthier guy out of getting a rotation that's been hurt. We add mix this and never in our bullpen, and we might be a team that's as good as that one back then. I, I you know what, I, I feel the same way, and I think one, you know, people don't look at it this way, but the media attention is is not the same, you know. And I think you know if we had fans and we had the media, and we had you know the hoopla of of a major league season. It's different. It's, 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 it's so different to the point to where, uh, you know, you can go to the ballpark and you don't have to worry about the fans getting on, you don't have to worry about all the distractions that come with, with playing at the major league level. Uh, they don't have to worry about that this year. And uh, it's, 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 it's different. Uh, I think it's, it's helpful. You know, especially with the young guys that we have, you don't have, you know, you don't have, you go on the road, you don't have guys throwing beer at you or calling your names <laughs> or, you know, things like that. And uh, it, it gives you an opportunity to kind of focus in on just the game. And I think uh, that helps a lot, you know, because, you know, when you're playing Major League Baseball, there's a lot of distractions. And, and as a player, you have to deal with those distractions and you still have to go out there and play the game. Uh, they don't have to deal with the distractions uh, because uh, – and, and it gives them an opportunity to kind of focus on the game. You know, you go to the ballpark, you work on your defense, you, you work on your hitting, you play the game. Uh, and, 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 and you don't have that outside noise. And I think that helps, helps baseball this year. Tremendous. You know, you, you mentioned something, yeah. There was a good chance back in the day when I was playing the outfield, you were playing the outfield, that we could have gone back to the wall and somebody dump a Budweiser over our head out there by the wall. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that this year. You're right, the players don't have that pressure. So, that you know, I miss that element in the game, the challenges that are presented because of the fan pressure, but um, I'm looking forward, no matter what, it's fun to watch baseball either way. And, you know, for me, for me, you know, I, I kind of, I, I love that. You know, I think it kind of got me going. You know, when you're playing on the road, you got fans yelling at you, screaming at you, and when you do something good in that game, they kind of get a little quiet. So, uh, and, and you get a chance to talk to those people. You know, they say, you you know, you suck and, and, and stuff yep. like that. 
and, and like I said, some players can deal with that. Some players kind of love that, and it gets them going. Um, you know, and that's the one thing that that's sort of missing this year, um, especially for some of the young players. The older players have already been through it. It's the young players that I'm, I'm talking about that, you know, don't have to go through that. And uh, that's something that you know, is missing from this, this year. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when, when we go back to normal, if, if, if it's the same. Yeah, well, I know this. This is going to be a fun season for the White Sox the rest of the way out, my friend. And I'm glad that uh, that you were able to join me here today on the Budweiser Happy Hour. You and I hanging out just like we used to back in the day with the White Sox. We were playing when you were coaching. I was up in the broadcast booth, man. So it's a pleasure. That's right. Always, BJ.